My name is Aleska Sinkic. I'm currently a deputy head of the EU delegation to Russia. Uh, and before that, I was, um, until July 2018, I was uh, deputy um, head of the special monitoring mission to Ukraine. I am Slovenian diplomat and I was serving in that capacity in uh, New York to the UN, in the OSCE to Vienna, uh, as well as uh, I was special advisor to the director of ODIR for three years. I think the organizations such as OSCE and Council of Europe do face challenges. They face challenges from the interpretation of what they were made for and what the commitments that the states have agreed to actually mean in today's world. For the time being, uh, there is still quite a good connection between the civil society and international organizations. I agree that the civil society organizations who want to have the same kind of engagement with the international organizations, both as has been before, may have to fear that this will change. International organizations were always relying on the civil society. The fact is only how much they were admitting that part and how much they are not. Currently, there is a bit of a uh, a thing about civil society is only criticizing, so some countries don't like to be criticized either by the peers, by the other states, or by the civil society. And while they can be uh, a little bit more, let's say, um, understanding that another member state is, um, is criticizing, uh, criticizing them, they have much more leverage towards their civil society. And that's where there is a threat to civil society is in their own countries. And international organizations will still, or the other members, will still preserve, and the European Union among them, will still try to preserve this forum for the civil society representatives to speak to their countries and to the others about what's going on in the country. Uh, I think the issue of sovereignty, or the fact where does the sovereignty um, impact on the international order and international law, is one of the major questions and challenges in the current world. What we see in, the, uh, in, in contrast with what was in the 90s, when there was a high, high uh, understanding for the international order, international commitments to be adopted, what now we are seeing is the security challenges that are out there are sort of overpowering this international law and are making the countries, and that goes for big, big and small countries, to somehow get a little bit more into themselves and emphasize their sovereignty in making decisions. What we see in the Russian Federation right now is that uh, the excuse of sovereignty, what they like in the international organizations is their veto power, wherever they are. They like this, uh, using this element of sovereignty to question the international law, and that's where one has to be concerned. Because international law in the interpretation of the European Union, everybody has to uh, understand what is the international order in order to, to, to uh, address the global challenges.